the Town. Hello, everybody. My name is Brody Kelly, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. Now, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. My name is Brian Kelly, and we have... Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Kelly, and welcome back to another edition of Talk of the Town. Hey, last week. Hello everybody, my name is Brian Kelly and welcome back to Talk of the Town. We have an interesting show for you today. We're going to be talking about the greening of Milton. Now, some of you may have noticed lately at the pumps, the price of gasoline has dropped everything. And so, man, it makes you think of, there's, there's no energy crisis anymore and everything. And we don't have to worry about conserving energy and all that stuff. Global warming must be a myth. And so I have a couple of guests here that might disagree with some of those statements. Uh, a couple of Miltonians here. We have Henry McLean and we have J.B. Clancy. Both of them are uh, architects, certified with the American Institute of Architects, is that right? And, um, but they're also members of Sustainable Milton and they're also on the Alternate Energy Committee with the Town of Milton, is that correct? Correct. And so they have been working on a lot of programs and so don't let the price of gasoline fool you there is still concern about the environment and energy in general, and we should still be conserving energy and uh, learning ways that we can do that in our homes especially. So you're gonna talk, to, talk a little bit about that, aren't you? So, so stay tuned, this is gonna be a great show. We're gonna learn something today, aren't we? Henry, yes. are we gonna learn we, something? We definitely <laughs> will, right? Okay, all right, so who, who wants to speak first about the greening of Milton here? Sir? So, well, let's see, back in about 2010, Brian, we sat down with the town meeting and, and the process through um, the town to become a green community. And that, that meant that we had to go through a protocol with the town to be eligible for a sum of money. Back then it was um, about $170,000 that the town got from the DOER, the Department of Energy and Resources. And, um, over the course of that period of time, the next five years, we had to make a commitment to save about 20% of energy just at the town level. And okay. Bill Ritchie and Bill Clark, the town planner and, and head of consolidated services, Bill Ritchie, made a real um, great effort with all the new schools. We had a, a good heads up with that. And we were able to cut energy use um, in conservation by about 25 to 28%. Really? Yeah. So that, that has happened, and that's now made us eligible for ongoing grants Wait, at the did town we get level. The other money? Did oh, we, we got that first. We, we got that first. Yeah, and that actually some of that was responsible for a related grant to get the solar up on the on this town hall and okay. to do a bunch of other things, <laughs> which included efficiencies and lighting and upgrades to pumps and a bunch of other things in the town. Some oh, people may have noticed the solar trash compactors in Central Square and such that has the Green Communities Those are logo. Big, big bellies. The big bellies, big exactly. Bellies. And it, there's a logo on there that says, you know, Milton Green Communities. And that was part of recognizing the town having gone through these steps, meeting these criteria to qualify for this state program, which was the Green Communities Act. Right. And how many how many towns in uh, Massachusetts? Well, let's see. So there's about 350 municipalities, and there are about I think half of the of the town of the state's towns are now part of this green community. They've um, come along, but we were part of the first wave, and we're only one of only I think about seven or eight towns that have actually reached that 20 percent reduction in the five years. So that's now that's just on a municipal level. That's, that's just all on the municipal the town level. Owned buildings, right. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. And what the our committee has been doing, and um, over the last four or five years, and Jay Bolia, who's the town um, uh, building inspector, and Tara Mono Richer, Riker, and um, um, Lori Webster, and a few other people on the committee, have been tracking all these different things as looking at the whole town, which it turns out the municipality is only about two and a half percent of. So there's a lot more energy used. And so we all save 28% on 2%. Correct. Okay, so we have a long way to go. Correct. Although, did you measure it against the, other, the rest of the town? Is well, there a way of measuring it? Well, we're in the process of doing that. And the other interesting thing is that in addition to the conservation, we've had a big um, push to get solar PV going in town. And we're about 7 or 8% of all Solar the, what? I'm sorry, PV is photovoltaics. Photovoltaics. Solar, yeah. solar panels. I, oh, yeah. I know solar <laughs> panels. I'm saying <laughs> stuff. There we go. <laughs> okay. But that's saving, um, when we look at the big picture, because the town's actually in the process of signing into a larger um, five megawatt system 
that will get us to about 25 percent just in, in renewable energy uh, reduction as well. So you kind of have to add that to the conservation to come up with a number that's closer to 50, 55 percent of the energy that the town. Well, so they've really done a great job, eh? They've done an amazing job, yeah. <laughs> So we're not adding solar panels, we're just buying electricity generated from solar panels? Well, Is that we're what you're actually saying? contracting what are called PPA or power purchase agreements for most of them. Okay. So that gives us the opportunity to call that our electricity, our renewable uh, solar electrical. Um, okay. Re and so it reduces our carbon footprint, which is the big thing we're all the bottom line. focused on. Correct. Right. And to put this into a larger context, right, we are a town in the state of Massachusetts, you know, in the United States. And, and there have been targets that have been set internationally, federally, and statewide that have tried to give people goals in terms of energy reduction. So the state of Massachusetts set a goal for a 25% reduction in energy consumption by the year 2020. So all of these programs that we're talking about and measures are really being set up to try and collectively achieve these energy reduction So what year goals. was that baseline drawn? We started in 2008 and we push, <coughs> pushed it back there because that was the time when the schools were all being commissioned. So that was a good time that showed, and we could, we could manipulate a little bit. When but we but we for that 2020, the, what did they use as a baseline for that year 2020? Um, we have goal. that on the data yeah. there, but it's, I think it's 1990 mm -hmm. levels. Right. So they'll look, okay, yeah. levels. Correct. Okay. So yeah. they're actually, you know, going back in time and then setting reductions from there. Yeah. But um, the Green Communities Act was kind of part of that larger statewide effort yeah. to incentivize towns to come up with a plan and a program to reduce their energy consumption. And so that's what this committee has kind of been engaged in, trying to help the town of Milton on the municipal side to achieve those targets. And it's good to know too that Massachusetts is actually number one in energy efficiency in the country now. Surpassed California the last couple of years right. under this whole new program. So we're really leading the pack in terms of, you know, being out in front. But we have a long way to go, right? Well, yeah, but I guess yeah. I'm, what we're here to say, too, is that Milton has done an amazing job being one of those top 10 communities in the state of Massachusetts, which is number one in the country. So, so you, when you got a town meeting to agree, um, what, what, what was that program that they agreed to? Was well, Green Communities. Green, Green Communities community, program. But, but some things change now. For homeowners that are going to be doing a renovation, a big renovation, yep. or build a new home, what yep. does that mean to them? Well, so one of those five parameters um, or protocols that we had to meet was called um, the stretch code. We had, to, we had to agree to, in that set, a new level, a little bit more stringent level in energy use in homes. As a matter of fact, the, the new code, the IECC 2009 or 2012, that's been adap adapted statewide in the meantime, is the same code itself. So what we committed to back in 2010 is now code anyway. So it, it really didn't make a difference. They're going to have to do that. So what is it that people everywhere are going to have to do because of the code anyways? What's the new, it's, what's the difference now? It's just a little bit more stringent. It's about 15% more energy efficient your homes have to be. But again, what we're here to point out is that that's actually a win-win for everybody. Okay. By putting that money into insulation and air sealing, we can look at some of the slides later, you're actually recouping that money in a short amount of time, five years or so, and then you're actually not spending that money. So if you take it out 20 years, it's an investment program for everyone. Okay. And the reason why the codes have focused on energy efficiency is that's usually um, the, the cheapest way to reduce energy is first to conserve it rather right. than to try and produce it. Right. And homes that aren't insulated offer some of the best opportunities through which to conserve energy. And a lot of homes in Milton aren't insulated because they were built before insulation yeah, or, right. you know. Right. And you're a sailor, right, Brian? Uh, I've gone sailing. I don't know if you <laughs> call me a sailor. Okay. Well, there's a good analogy about a hole in your boat. And instead of plug, <laughs> plugging the leak is the first thing that you want to do before you start bailing. Good point. Okay. There we go. yeah, yeah. Do you want to go on the slides here? Because sure, we, we don't want to miss out and let yeah. people see. Folks, we're going to put some slides. So uh, let's see what we have first. Just so. run through a couple, yeah. But, yeah. So we're going to show people how to plug those leaks? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Tell this, us about the, this slides. first slide here just talks about the Massachusetts Clean Energy and Climate Plan for 2020 that we had referenced earlier. And so it just talks about some of the targets that were set federally, and the state of Massachusetts chose the higher one, the 25% reduction. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the bigger picture 
target and goals that have been set from a policy standpoint that we're kind of following as a town. And we did it. And we did, we, we, we're, we're just about well, there. Well, yeah. well, actually, we're way well, beyond when we think there, about right. the renewables. We're right. way beyond that. On the, the municipal, state is on the municipal on side. On the municipal side. Yeah. 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 You want the next slide? Yeah. So, yep, this talks about the green communities, which we had mentioned, you know, Milton being designated a green community in 2011. Um, and as Henry said, part of that commitment was to reduce our energy consumption on the municipal side by 20%. Where did the 170,000 go? Into the general coffers of the town? Or? Um, it went into um, work on a lot of the buildings, uh, ongoing maintenance, upgrading lighting systems, pumps. Oh, that's what it did. Okay. Yep. All right. And then some of it went into the wind fund, which again, uh, it was an old other program, but now that wind effort is being replaced by this new uh, power purchase agreement for solar, which is coming in 2015. Okay. I think we have a slide on that coming up. Yeah. yeah. So these are the five criteria that Henry had mentioned, and the stretch energy code is, is kind of written there as, uh, what is that? I think it was number, it's number five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so criteria three, establish the energy use baseline and develop a plan. That's really a lot of the work that the Alternatives of Energy Committee worked on, and we're going to kind of go through that process a little bit more. But that was really a collective effort between our group, um, town officials, Jay Bullio and the building department and such. Um, and that was a really, we have some graphs here that actually have some pretty enlightening data. <laughs> So you know, <coughs> I see some bars. My eyes aren't good enough yeah, to see yeah, the numbers. Yeah, yeah. So what are the green mean? Well, well actually, green? what happened if you, you know, right around this time is that the state made an agreement with all utilities to create this incredible program called Mass Energy Insight, which funnels all the energy data from every single town into, and the utilities that serve these towns into one database, which we have access and all these towns have well, access to idea. directly. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. So the utility bills every month are pushed into this program. Right. And so a town administrator can go on to this website and look and see what every facility is consuming to see if it's consuming more or less than it was doing the previous month or year. Mm -hmm. And this is what we use to track the energy reductions from 08 to, to now. And the green bars represent total energy consumption. And as you can see, you know, they're moving gradually downhill, yeah. and that was that. And when the darker tail, teal color, whatever color that is, the blue in the, blue in the middle there, was the middle grass Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Can't we can't see, see folks. I know you can't see at home because it, I think this is broadcast over analog. There you go. There's no way they're going to see that. We better go to another slide. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we're we're going in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a slide showing the town solar, as I mentioned earlier, which is, you know, somewhere around 28 to 25 percent. It's... We're still working out the final details because we don't know exactly the size of the system that's going in next year. But right now, we're about 7% of all the buildings in town are, are you know, operated by solar. And with this new installation, it's going to be up to Where is the installation going? 25%. I believe it's Braintree on a stop and shop, but don't oh, quote I, me on that yet. I, I've seen there is one at the Braintree old dump at the yeah. dump. Again, there, there's a I, giant one there that's about to... Yeah, I've so seen them working on then it. that's going to be announced at I the think. transfer station. The Correct. old um, it's going to be a, it's going to be announced coming up soon in 2015. Okay. Um, and this is a slide that basically is part of what we were working with to measure the whole town effort, and it's a program tied into ICLE, um, which is a a group of towns and cities for sustainability. That's an icky name. It's, a, it's sort of an icky name, but Ickley? Ickley, yeah. <laughs> I warned you. I know. I know, Brian. You said that was coming. <laughs> But what this shows is, and this was again a lot of the effort that our committee worked on, was you know how do you measure how much energy a town produces? Clearly, we had this mass energy insight program, so we could measure the municipal buildings, but there had to be a protocol that was set up to go and measure the houses, transportation, waste. So again, our committee worked on contacting people at the Department of Transportation, looking at data coming out of the assessor's office, and trying to kind of analyze what is the overall energy consumption of the town? And then in this chart, it looks at how does that relate to the <laughs> municipal load? So the small, thin, little purple bar there, or purple pie, those are the town buildings and, and vehicles. So obviously, a majority of the energy consumption of the town is not municipal. And the blue pie, <coughs> those are the houses in Milton. And if anyone knows Milton, they know Milton is you know a community of homes. Mm -hmm. And so it's obvious that the biggest energy consuming component of the town will be the houses in Milton. And the, the Excuse me for a minute, I have to go out. 
Sure. <coughs> I apologize. And you can see the yellow sliver is missing on that because there's no industry in Milton to speak of. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and the transportation is fairly large because in this protocol, we actually had to account for the three miles of I-93, which passed through Milton. Uh-huh. And the, the 200, gift the 250, carbon, carbon gift. 250 million vehicle miles traveled annually oh, or okay. something. All right. <laughs> And then this is looking at just the buildings, okay? So, but from the entire town. And you can see that 80% of the footprint is from residential buildings. So again, even more focus on the homes, um, which you know, we, we were sort of focused on because we live in homes and we try to work on those. And, yeah. and after we did this work for the town buildings, you know, we, we were very excited about the energy reductions that were achieved, but then we turned around and looked at data like this and realized that that's just a small little dial. And if collectively as a town, you know, we're, we want to work toward reducing energy consumption, making homes more comfortable and cost less to run, that it's really the homes that one needs to begin to look at. I like this slide because I, I, I see when they measure carbon emissions, they're talking about tons, but they spell it with a T-O-N-N-E-S. Is that right? Is that correct? Yeah, that might be an international code on that. I'm not quite and sure. So, but they're saying, now in 2011, this slide is saying that, what, the residents in Milton emitted 77,000 tons of CO2 in 2011. The residential buildings. The yeah. residential the homes, OK. And then. Um, and that's 20 million square feet, which is kind of an interesting number, too. I can't imagine, I can't envision that. That's a big house. It's a big house. <laughs> but one ton of CO2 emitted is equal to 84 gallons, burning 84 gallons of diesel fuel while flying to Paris seven times. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's round trip DB yeah, or not. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, but so, it's, but it's, it's an incredible amount of energy consumption is when you really... So bottom line is what you'd like to see, if I'm correct, and both of you are, are architects, so... Yes. Yep. You'd just like to see people build more efficient or uh, have more efficient homes. Is that, and that would solve a lot of this yeah, and, waste? Yeah, and they say that about 80 to 90 percent of the homes that are here now are going to be here in 2050 when we need to meet these new deadlines. So the big onus is on the existing homes because they're all here and they're going to... What's the most important thing that a homeowner could do and and at a minimal cost to improve or reduce their carbon footprint right Insulate now? and air seal. Insulate and air seal. Air seal, 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 seal. Yeah, almost like putting a seal on your house. And just so you know, I, I do these routinely. I go into homes and really great homes here in Milton and other towns. And routinely I walk in and there's no insulation in the basement. There's very little insulation in the roof. And through the Mass Save program now, you can get <clears throat> up to $2,000 um, or 75% of your insulation free. So it's, it's kind of a no-brainer to start there. Which that amount of money can actually cover a significant portion of the cost to insulate the home. For most of these homes that aren't insulated. Yeah. So, you know. And, so, right now, contact Mass Save. Folks, contact Mass Save. Have, have a look at this. Look into re insulating, right. especially if it's insulation that was put a long time ago and yep. maybe not have. Does insulation ever like lose its insulating values with time? No, it doesn't really. And, and as a matter of fact, it actually well, that's works. That's good news. And, and some people don't realize this, but it works in the summer as well as it works in the winter. So when you have those hot, hot days in the summer, your insulation is actually working well in the attic to yeah. keep. Why don't we flip forward? Yeah. We have a couple okay, more yeah, slides okay. where we just talk about insulation and oh. air sealing. And uh, did I get ahead there of you? There you go. That's oh, all right. Okay. Now here's, here's the mass hey, right, program right, you there, just folks. talked about. It. Okay, good. And, and this is Next Step Living is entered into an agreement with ourselves, our committee, and Sustainable Milton to create this Green Homes Milton program. So we're going to be doing ongoing uh, workshops with them. We did one in November. And we'll be doing a couple more in the upcoming uh, months. And will Sustainable Milton have all that information on their site? Exactly. And yeah. what, what's the website for Sustainable Milton? SustainableMilton.com, I believe, but we can... Okay, so folks, just check out Sustainable Milton. You have a link from the town website to that? Uh, there is. It's okay. actually on the DPW site. On the D okay. Yep. So townofmilton.org, work your way to the DPW site, and then you'll find Sustainable Milton. Yeah. And you're going to have some workshops, you said? Well, there's... Yep. There was one already at the library in uh, we're, November. We're, we're okay. setting up other ones in, so the, in 2015. Yeah. And was that televised, do you know? Uh, there was a flyer that was sent out. The workshop itself was not televised, I don't believe. But you the, might consider that in the future. Yeah, that's a good idea. Access to right, but the that. session is, is, is available online, and we can, we can make it available. We're, we're still in the process of doing that. Okay. Yep. All right. And this slide just shows a little bit more of how that breaks down to, and I was mentioning to you earlier, Brian, the notion of, miles per gallon in your car, 
Well, the equivalency of that in houses is called BTUs per square foot because we have square feet of houses and we have BTUs that everything translates to your electric, your gas, your oil, whatever it is, all translates down to BTUs. And it turns out that the average home in the Boston, greater Boston area uses about 72, 70, around that 70,000 BTUs per square foot per year. Is that British thermal units? Yeah, that's British correct. thermal units, exactly. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> the point is that we know we can get these new homes, these, these existing homes, down to 40. 40, or about okay. Four, instead of 70, down to about 40. Wow. Without a lot of work. And right. with basically giving you more comfort Right. Saving you money at the same time. I like to save money. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't be, know who and, doesn't. And be comfortable. And be Waste <laughs> not, want not. <laughs> so here you were talking about, you know, you are asking a question of what you can do. Obviously, insulation is, is one of the first uh, things that one would look at in their house. First, they need to determine if your house is insulated or not. Now, some houses do have insulation in them, old fiberglass insulation and such. So you generally can't put new insulation into a house that does have insulation into it, but they can determine that in five minutes if there's insulation in your walls or not. And if there isn't, what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll blow in cellulose, which is a recycled newspaper product that's been treated for fire and, and insects and such. And that, you know, creates a very well-sealed, continuous amount of insulation in the cavity of your wall. So that's the primary kind of... Uh, do you use the same thing in attics? And you would use the same thing in attics, correct? Uh, if you have the old uh, insulation in the attic, the, um, what do you call the first one? The fiberglass. fiberglass. Yep. But not, that, not a, a lot of it. Are you almost better off removing it and putting a new layer of this in? Because um, you can't put this on top of that, right? Oh, you can. Yeah, you oh, could. You can. In oh, that right. case, yeah, I was talking more specifically about the walls. The walls, I got you. Yeah, so okay. in the attic, you could continue to build this on top of the fiberglass. And are you supposed to insulate the, the rafters? In the in a home or yeah, not? I've there's, seen there's different, varying ideas on yeah, that. There's yeah. different uh, cathedral ceiling options. You know, we used to have the vented roof, but now with these new foams, that if you had a cathedral ceiling, you can go with foams and not worry about your venting. So that's been available oh, for the last 10, 15 years, and we do a lot of those. In, but in, one one thing this slide yeah. shows is, you know, with R8, which might be the amount of insulation that you can get in, you know, a, a old house wall, which is made of two by fours you know, you're getting a 90% reduction in heat flow compared to an uninsulated wall. So, you know, and then if you go more, obviously the percentage is not as great. So the percent reduction is greatest when you go from like zero to 60, um, which is where, you know, an uninsulated building to an insulated building is really Makes a, all the difference a, in the world. a big, yeah. um, a okay. big dial to turn. All right. And can... then that's where that 75% up to $2,000 is available to, um, to Milton residents to go toward paying for that insulation. And that $2,000 can actually cover quite a bit. It probably makes sense that, you know, um, some of these government programs where people receive oil and things like that, there should be a requirement before you can receive oil, the state should consider going in there and insulating some of these homes. Right. They'd probably have to give a lot less oil away because these are probably some of the people that be least likely to be putting the insulation in. Well, well there is a, a weatherization program for low-income housing that the state administers. They are, so they're doing something yep. that, Right. Uh, good, good. Okay. And, they're, and they're also pushing on the, um, on the renewable front, too. So they're solar programs. Solarize um, Mass was a program that got started a few years ago. To, and it turns out that solar isn't actually available for everybody. Um, that maybe 15% of the homes have the correct orientation and don't have blockage from trees. And those studies have been done in various municipalities. Right, I didn't have the right orientation. When my, right. Oh, my roof was too right. broken up. Yeah. So a better reason, but 100% of the homes have the capacity to get better insulation. So we're Absolutely. running out of time. This, this is so our we last slide. Oh, we so, are. Yep, so we're make done. sure you say what you want to say <laughs> now. So folks, uh, listen up. We're, 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 bringing, we're wrapping this up. You're talking to J.B. Clancy and, um, and, uh, and Henry, Henry McLean. Uh, both architects, both on Sustainable Milton, also with the uh, Alternate Energy, Energy Committee with the Town of Milton. They're, work, they're working their butt off for us to help us save some money. <laughs> so go ahead. You, you can start wrapping it up. Tell us what you're going to say there, JB. Well, I think just that, uh, you know, again, it's a, it's a win-win for everyone, the homeowner and the town, if, uh, you know, to go in and to uh, contact Mass Save or Next Step Living 
um, to have someone come out to your house to take a look at your building, to give an assessment, which is free, no cost to you, to have them come like and, and give you an assessment. And they'll give you ideas and tell you what the opportunities are and how you can save money by reducing your energy consumption. And that will then go toward helping us as a town collectively reduce our energy consumption. And we need to know what towns, what homes in Milton don't have any insulation. Well, so if you know of a home, <laughs> call the hotline. Well, there's actually another program that we did with Sagewell that had a, a, a truck go through town, like a Google truck, and did some pictures. Of Could everybody. actually tell which ones were leaking. And those are available. Yeah, and those <laughs> are you kidding me? No, well, actually, oh my God, I love it. Brian, those are available to everybody, but just for your own address. So that's available now. Really? We, yeah, we can, we can oh, make another good, link. Yeah, we can I, I want to know link. that. I'm going to check fine. But yep. the last thing I want to mention, oh. because we talked about this earlier, is that all of this goes towards increasing the value of one's home. So the real estate sure. market is starting to respond to this. And green homes are becoming that much more valuable and have the capacity to resell better. And everyone knows that there's the cost to own the home and the cost to run the home and they're related. Yep. And the real estate industry is starting to put those two together. It's already that way in Europe. When you buy a house, you know how energy efficient that building is or not. Just like the sticker when you buy a car. Exactly. It's, it's you see coming. The yep. on is it a 10 mile go. per gallon car or is it a 60 mile per gallon you car? You gotta make that decision with <laughs> eyes wide open, right? <laughs> Oh, hey, this has been fun. Folks, there's no, never a bad time to start saving money. There you go. And, so, right. Uh, and right at home. And it's saving starts at home. There you go. And so uh, especially looking at that insulation. And then um, go to the Sustainable Milton website. You have other tips there, I'm sure, right. that can help people. Lots yep. of them, yeah. And so. I, I know Laurie Webster. I, I, I went through some things with her, talking about the carbon footprint. It's amazing. I turned my dryer down. We, we dry on low heat now. There we you dry go. longer on low heat. Because it costs less to to spin the drum than it does to heat the elements. That's right. Yep. Do, and I never, I haven't ruined any clothes. And <laughs> I, I tell you, we've been doing that ever since Laurie told me about that yep. years ago. Yep. And uh, it's it's made a difference. It's really worked well for us. And MassSave.com, that's Mass the place to go. Com. Yeah, that's where all these different communities are going basically because it is money that the utilities are working through um, from the from the fed government from the state government to to get access to these lower costs for everybody so excellent well yep. gentlemen i appreciate your efforts All right. uh and uh and folks at home thank you for watching talk of the town make sure you check out what they have to say on the um uh, on the website and uh get those homes more efficient and uh Oh, and I just saw this in the Globe. This is in yesterday's Globe, Griswold Home. If you have Christmas lights up, 25,000 light bulbs, if these are the old kind, not the LEDs, and you just had it on for a month, it costs you around $5,000 for one month. Can you imagine that? So, um, That's a couple trips to Paris. Some of you might not like the glow of those LED lights, but I like the glow in my wallet when you save, it costs you about 500 for the LEDs for the same amount of light bulbs for the same period of time. So that was a great article. Check yesterday's Globe. What is today's date? Today is the 18th? Yep. That was the December 17th. You can check out the Globe, I think, for the, the little piece by, uh, written by Megan Turich, T-U-R-C-H-I, Turchi. So check that out. Okay, folks, you've wasted another perfectly good 30 minutes, as they say, used to say on Click and Clack. Remember, <laughs> yes, listen to yeah, Click yeah. and Clack, the Tappet Brothers? But uh, no, I appreciate you tuning in, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for watching Talk of the Town. Thanks, Brian. Say goodbye. Thank you, Brian. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.